All right, we're back. Good morning again to everyone. Um, sorry about the crazy schedule this morning, but that's just how we roll sometimes. So I'm in the office now and uh, I wanted to introduce the equine category that we had talked about yesterday. Um, Dr. Judy announced that we were going to do some stuff around naturally healthy horses, uh, also donkeys. So I guess we'll categorize it as equines because um, everything that we're doing, we're trying to also make it applicable for donkeys since we love our donkeys. Sorry, Tamar. I'm interrupting order fulfillment this morning too with our live. Um, so I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the horse stuff and um, some of this stuff is actually we have similar products for um, our dogs and cats as well uh, and so when we find something we like we try to, to stick to it so um for those of you asking after this morning's live how big is goliath so if you know horses they're measured in hands um and so goliath is 19 two hands high and that's about uh i think that's like six foot three to his back um and he is only about three or four inches shorter than um the biggest living horse was um and who actually just passed away recently so he's probably one of the largest horses in um, the country maybe even in the world he's very very big um and so he uh is a gentle giant but he is hard to quantify how large he is he also i talked about how he had the one eye and cancer um but goliath has been my horse maybe many of you can resonate with this where you have an animal that comes into your life and they teach you a lot of new things that you didn't know before and so when it comes to the equines um goliath was really that animal for me because he uh, was a rescue with so many medical problems and uh traditional medication was pretty much it was curing and killing him at the same time and so that really forced me to um, use integrative medicine and I actually reached out to Dr. Joyce Harmon of Harmony Equine. I did a consultation with her um, and she really helped me get Goliath on a supplement nutrition and Chinese herb protocol that literally saved his life. Um, and so she didn't really do anything necessarily different than what we advocate for for our cats and dogs. It's just a lot less common in horses. Um, horses are actually, for those of you that don't know, they're typically vaccinated twice a year. So we talk about vaccines with our cats and dogs um, every few years when with horses, it's actually twice a year for some of their vaccines. Um, they get dewormed um, yearly. Running a fecal sample on a horse is not very common. You can request it. Um, and so instead of worming unnecessarily. That's one of the things that we do with our animals is we just run fecals multiple times per year to make sure that um, there's no parasite seen, but horses are typically just dewormed blindly. That's very common. Um, another thing with horses that is very common is um, they the flies are obviously an issue with horses. Flies really bother them. They attract a lot of flies and insects. 
Um, and so flies are typically more of an issue than fleas and ticks are, but they do, of course, get, um, they can get lice, they can get ticks, they can get things like that. Uh, and a lot of the sprays and chemicals that we're using on the horses are, you know, straight pesticides, and they have the big warning labels on the side of the fly spray bottle that says, you know, do not come in contact with your skin and, and all sorts of stuff. They're really, really harsh chemical products. Um, and so the horse world, I think, is in desperate need of integrative medicine. And there are quite a few wonderful people out there doing it besides us. Um, Dr. Joyce Harmon is, of course, I'm a huge fangirl of her, so I talk about her all the time. Um, and she's gonna actually come on and do a lot of educational stuff um, with us, which I'm super excited about. But there's a huge need we talk all the time about our, our dogs and cats, but in these other areas with these other animals, um, there's a huge need. We, we still have these issues with over vaccination, overuse of chemicals, uh, really, really harsh, harsh things that we use on our animals. Um, so I wanted to start there with the fly spray. So um, there is a few options when it comes to fly spray for horses that are not the toxic pe pesticides. What we're using right now, which I actually really love, is Dr. Melissa Shelton's Animalio. So Evict, you can use on your dogs as well. Um, so we have the small version, the ready to use version on the website already. It's mixed with a fractionated coconut oil. So it's not for diffusion, it's for topical use. You can rub a few drops on your hand and pet your dog um, as an insect repellent, basically. Same thing with the horses, but we have a bigger bottle um, and this is not mixed with fractionated coconut oil. Um, so this needs to be diluted down if you're going to use it into a spray. We do a um, basically four to one ratio of fractionated coconut oil to evict for our horse's fly spray. It works very wonderfully. Um, we tried it out uh, on a trail ride through the woods and we're very impressed with how well it repelled the flies. Um, and of course, this is a much, much safer, better option for our animals and also for us, because when we're spraying, like with Goliath, when I spray him, he's so large, I get a lot of the spray back on me. And, um, you know, having a baby and me having some of um, my own health problems, I'm very conscious about exposing myself to chemicals. So this has been a game changer. Um, I stopped using traditional fly sprays on our horses. Uh, when Goliath got sick because it dawned on me that I was putting really bad chemicals on a horse that had cancer and that was a big no-no. Um, and this I highly recommend. So we have the larger bottle of Evict on our website. It's under the horse section. So if you go under four equines um, and you mix it with a fractionated coconut oil to make a nice fly spray. Um, and then we also have for uh, dogs, we have the smaller version that's ready to use. This is mixed with coconut oil already and you can just use a few drops and apply it all over their body. So wonderful, um, Dr. Melissa Shelton, her website is animalio.info. Let me type it in real quick. Um, lots of essential oil options there. We carry a few of them, but she has many more and lots of instructions and content there. So if you're interested in essential oils, um, we recommend Dr. Melissa Shelton. Um, so going back to Goliath's story, he not only had the cancer, he also had, um, he had his surgery on his eye and then he had chemotherapy for that. So that was really tough on him. He also had something called EPM, which I think I'm probably not going to pronounce it right, but it's equine protozoal myelencephalitis, I believe. Um, but basically, it's an organism that they can get from mostly possum feces, and uh, it actually attacks their nervous system. So a lot of times um, when they are infected with this organism, it can make them walk kind of like they're drunk or they have really bad balance. Um, and it can be very dangerous, obviously, for horses because they're so large. Um, and so the, tr the traditional treatment for that um, is very harsh. We went through basically three rounds of treatment with Goliath, and the reason we chose to do traditional treatment first was because his mobility was deteriorating so bad that when he would get on the ground to roll, which is a, a normal behavior for horses, um, he couldn't stand back up. And, you know, he's w probably one of the biggest living horses in the world right now. Um, and so trying to get him up off the ground, it's like, you know, you basically need a crane um, if he can't do it himself. 
So uh, we went with a traditional treatment, which started to improve his mobility. However, with a lot of these really toxic um, treatments that are killing, you know, one organism within the body that is causing issues, it's also damaging the host body that you are treating. So it pretty much killed Goliath's entire gut microbiome. Um, he had liquid diarrhea. He, no matter how much he ate with the liquid diarrhea, he was still losing weight. Um, and so while he wasn't getting stuck on the ground anymore, his overall health was really deteriorating from the traditional medication. And so that was um, when we were basically forced into into pursuing herbals and supplements and things like that because he physically just could not handle the traditional treatments anymore. Um, and so when I reached out to Dr. Joyce, she prescribed him with um, two herbals. Uh, Ching Hao San was one and Qi Performance, um, both to help with his EPM and his immune system. And then for supplements to really bolster his gut again because he had that liquid diarrhea. And of course the traditional veterinarians wanted him on metronidazole and we all know the story. Um, so that is actually how I got introduced to Symbiota. We've talked about it for dogs, but I actually uh, used it first with Goliath, with our horse. Um, so it's the same, same uh, idea as with dogs. It has a few strains of probiotics. It has the chaga mushrooms, which is a great anti-inflammatory. And it has the humic and fulvic acid, which are your soil-based organisms. And for horses, um, it's very obvious that the soil-based organisms are very important for them. They spend vast majority of their time grazing um, with their their nose and their mouth very very close, and actually they do eat some dirt when they're when they're eating. Um, and so having those healthy soil-based organisms for horses, I've found, is very important. Um, and so Goliath, this was part of his regime for a solid six months while we were trying to build him back up. Um, and once he started gaining weight, and as you saw this morning, he looks fantastic. He looks like a, a normal healthy horse. Um, and so now we just kind of supplement the symbiota as needed. So I'll just cycle on, I'll go through a bottle maybe like once a month um, at this point or once every few months um, and just to kind of refresh his gut flora. But we have not, when we stop the symbiota, he still has normal stools and um, continues to, to keep his weight. So symbiota EQ is the equine version. Um, it's very similar to the symbiota that we use for our canines and it's wonderful stuff. And it is a liquid, it's very palatable. Um, I've tried it with all of our animals and the little pony, um, she gets literally like this much grain. Uh, and so it's mostly mostly symbiota when she, when she gets it and uh, I haven't had any issues with palatability. So that's another great thing. Um, also the colostrum, we have the Biostar colostrum for canines, um, the little small container great for building up the immune system and immune system modulation. Same thing with the horses. Um, so same thing with the symbiota. I actually was using the horse version before I was using the dog version. Um, and again, for Goliath with the cancer, the EPM, the chemotherapy, this was really, really a game changer for him. Um, and again, he was on this for about six months. Um, and then after that, he was strong enough that uh, we just use it kind of supplementally now. Um, like Max, he's battling that upper respiratory infection. So we put him on the uh, colostrum and symbiota to help him battle whatever bug he's got. Okay, um, the next one is their Aller X EQ. Um, it has quercetin and boswellia. It is a very, very nice allergy product for horses. So we use this for um, our little miniature horse. We call him Booger, but his name is Lightning. You may have seen my daughter, little baby Sarah, uh, riding him. He's he's a sweet little old boy now, but he used to be a wild, wild child. Um, and he has occasionally kind of mild, like asthma-like symptoms, um, a little bit of coughing, a little bit of wheezing. Um, if uh, there's a lot of allergens in the air, especially in North Carolina during springtime, everything is yellow because there's so much pollen. So when he moved um, to the new environment from New Jersey to North Carolina, um, we started him on this and we have noticed uh, quite an improvement. So we decided to start carrying this as well. And that's for more of the allergy um, symptoms.
And lastly, um, we also have started giving them the Starlight EQ. Again, um, a lot of our rescues come from different places. So uh, Goliath and Max come from uh, Pennsylvania and Delaware, so they're not quite used to the extreme heat down here in the south. Um, and this is pretty much just an electrolyte formula. Um, it's mostly different types of salts, very high quality salts. And the idea is that when they're sweating a lot, uh, you wanna make sure that they are getting plenty of electrolytes. It also um, encourages drinking, which is very important for the horses to stay hydrated. Um, so I really like this. Again, we, only, we don't give this consistently. It's not an everyday thing. I like to give it just on those really hot days where I notice um, they're sweating and you can see kind of the salt stains after the sweat dries and you know that they're losing quite a bit of the electrolytes. I really like to just supplement this in their food. Um, and you just give a scoop whenever is needed. So, sorry, the, we're, we're getting fancy cameras and microphones so we'll have better um, shots. But everything is on the website under four equines. Let me pull up the link for anyone that is interested. Um, and like I said, we also have the Biostar Colostrum and the Biostar Symbiota. Both of those products we have for dogs as well. So we have a dog version and a horse version. If you have a lot of dogs and you want to get a, a bigger container of the Colostrum, um, feel free. It's the same Colostrum. It just comes in a different form for the horses. <sighs> okay. You don't have equines, but you are excited to see more about them. That is very wonderful, thank you. I hope that um, we don't frustrate the dog people by talking a little bit about horses. They won't be our main focus, but um, like I said, there's so much need in the horse world for people to open their eyes to ask questions and say like, why am I giving my horse uh, vaccines twice a year when they don't go anywhere and they're my pasture pet in my backyard, you know? Like things like that don't make much sense. Um, I used yeasty beastie, which is uh, an animalio essential oil, and it works wonders. Yes, we do have a topical version of animalio on the website as well for dogs. Um, fly sprays are horrible. Yes, the fly sprays for horses are, are so terrible. Okay, so we um, will continue to do more horse content and more horse products. Uh, like I said, for these things, these are all things that we um, have been using for over a year now ourselves. And so I said, I mean, I'm purchasing them for us, so why not make them available on the store? We have quite a few other things that we are going to be adding as well for the horses and a lot of free content. Uh, hopefully that uh, Dr. Joyce Harmon will help us push out some new and exciting things for all of our horse lovers. And don't worry if you are a dog or cat person, we are going to make sure that we still uh, really focus on our small animals, but we're going to offer more resources uh, as much as we can. So as much as we have bandwidth. Bandwidth. Okay. Let me see if I can pull up a wee bit of music. And tomorrow, I am off to the beach, so you will have you will have Dr. Judy for the rest of the week. Oh yes, my mini vacation. We're, I'm taking one day off Friday, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Can we stay offline the whole day on Friday? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't know how much I'm going to be able to relax because it's the baby's first beach trip. And I think I'm just going to be so worried about her trying to eat the sand. I don't know how much I'll be able to relax. <laughs> so. <sighs> if anyone has any beach tips for one-year-olds. <laughs> 
All right, I hope everyone has a wonderful day.